Hi, welcome to class. My name is Don LaFont, Professor Don, and this week in our class, we're covering Module 2, Cisco Concepts. So kick back 20 minutes or so, easy chapter, we'll cover all the concepts. If you're watching live with me, there'll be a Q&A at the end of the presentation. If you're watching as a recording in our classroom, ask your questions in the help discussion forum. And if you're watching it on YouTube, ask your questions in the comments at the bottom. And don't forget to uh, like my video. I would appreciate that. Let's go ahead and share my screen. And I will um, need to move this. And I need to start the presentation. And I need to do one more thing over here. All right, module two, switching concepts. We are going to explain how layer two switches forward data. We're going to talk about frame forwarding, explain how frames are forwarded in a switch networks, and we'll talk about switching domains, and we'll compare a collision domain to a broadcast domain. Frame forwarding. Now, there are two terms that are associated with frames entering or leaving an interface. There is ingress, that's when it's entering the interface, and egress, that's when it's exiting the interface. A switch forwards based on the ingress interface and the destination MAC address. A switch uses its MAC address table, also called a CAM table, to make forwarding decisions. A switch will never allow traffic to be forwarded out the interface that it is that it received the traffic. Now, I have a video here to show you this. Uh, again, the switch uses the MAC destination MAC address to determine the egress, um, right? Yep, the egress, where it's going. And then uh, before a switch can make that decision, it must learn what interface the decision is located the destination is located. A switch builds a MAC address table, also known as a CAM addressable memory table, by recording the source MAC address into the table along with the port it was received on ingress. This video explains how a switch builds its MAC address table by recording the MAC address of each device connected to the port. In this video, PCA is going to send an Ethernet frame to PCB, and PCB is going to send an Ethernet frame to PCA. We're going to examine how switches S1 and S2 build their MAC address tables, and also how they forward frames based on the information in those MAC address tables. PCA has an Ethernet frame to send to PCB. The source MAC address of the frame is 000A and the destination MAC address is 000B. The Ethernet frame is sent to switch S1. S1 receives the Ethernet frame, examines the source MAC address, and notices that this MAC address is not in its MAC address table, so it adds the MAC address and the incoming port number. Next, switch S1 examines the destination MAC address and notices that this MAC address is not in its table, so it floods it out all ports. PCB receives the Ethernet frame, examines the destination MAC address against its own MAC address, and notices that that is a match and receives the rest of the frame. The Ethernet frame continues to be forwarded to switch S2. Switch S2 examines the source MAC address of the frame, and notices it is not in its MAC address table, so it adds the MAC address and the incoming port to its MAC address table. Next, switch S2 examines the destination MAC address, notices that is not in its MAC address table, so it floods it out all ports. PCC receives the Ethernet frame, and its MAC address does not match the destination MAC address of the Ethernet frame, so it does not accept the rest of the frame. The router receives the Ethernet frame, examines the destination MAC address against its own MAC address, and knows it is not a match, so it does not receive the rest of the frame. Now let's have PCB sending a frame back to PCA. 
The source MAC address of the frame is C000B, and the destination MAC address is 000A. PCB sends it to switch S1. S1 notices that the source MAC address is not in its MAC address table, so it adds the MAC address and the incoming port number. Next, switch S1 examines the destination MAC address and notices that MAC address is in its MAC address table. So it sends it out just port one. PCA receives the Ethernet frame, examines the destination MAC address against its own MAC address and notices it is a match, so it receives the rest of the frame. All right, that did a really good job of explaining uh, how a switch learns about addresses. All right. Uh, so that uh, that video, I believe, came from Cisco One. Uh, so uh, it did a good job. I'm not sure if you can still access your Cisco One classroom. Uh, that's been something that's changed. But that video is definitely out on YouTube. That's where I have it linked from. Now, <clears throat> the uh, the switch the switch learns the switch uses a two step process uh, for for um, learning and forwarding method. Uh, first, um, it learns, it examines the source address, it adds the source MAC, if not already in the table, and it resets the time out, uh, the timeout setting back to five minutes if the source is in the table. Uh, then it forwards, it examines the destination address. If the destination MAC is in the MAC address table, it is forwarded out the specified port. If the destination MAC is not in the table, it is flooded out all interfaces except for the one that it was received. Now, switch forwarding methods. Uh, there's two methods, and then one of the methods has two methods. Uh, so, switches use switch switch switches use software on application-specific integrated circuits (ASICs) to make very quick decisions. You you'll never rarely see the term ASIC application specific uh, integrated uh, circuit, you know, you'll, it's just going to be called an ASIC. It's a hardware uh, <clears throat> that's loaded into today's switches. Uh, that's why it's able to make very quick, quick decisions. A switch will use one of two methods to make forwarding decisions after it receives the frame. It will store, one's called store and forward switching. It receives the entire frame and then ensures that the frame is valid. Uh, it, Store and forward switch is Cisco's preferred switching method because there's fewer um, error, errors caused by it. Cut through switching, on the other hand, forwards the frame immediately after determining the destination MAC address of an incoming frame and the egress port. Store and forward, and well, I'll explain both. Uh, store, and, store and forward switching uh, has two primary characteristics. First, uh, it has error checking. The switch will check the frame check sequence, FCS, for CRC errors. Those are, uh, any bad frames will be discarded. And it also has automatic buffering. The egress interface will buffer the frame while it checks for the FCS. This will also allow the switch to adjust to a potential difference in speeds between the ingress and the egress port. So uh, the Store and forward method will wait for the entire frame, the entire frame to be received, and then use the CRC to check to make sure it's valid. So you get very few errors with um, store and forward. On the other hand, cut through switching, uh, cut through forwards the frame immediately after determining the destination MAC. Um, and then there's two versions of cut through. There's also fragment free method, which checks the destination and ensures that the frame is at least 64 bytes. This will eliminate runs. The concepts of cut through switching, uh, it, is uh, it, it is appropriate for switches needing latency to be under 10 microseconds, does not check the F FCS to, uh, so it can pass along errors. It may lead to bandwidth issues if the switch propagates too many errors, and it cannot support posts with different speeds going from ingress to egress. So the, the, two, um, the two ports would have to be the same speed ports to be even considered. Notice here 
Uh, it just checks the first um, um, a Mac, just checks for the Mac to make sure that it's valid before it sends it on. Switching domains, uh, collision domains. Switches eliminate collision domains and reduce congestions as compared to hubs, for example. When there is full duplex on the link, the collision domains are eliminated. When there is one or more devices in half duplex, there will now be collision, a collision domain. There will now be contention for bandwidth and collisions are now possible. Most devices, including Cisco and Microsoft, use auto negotiation as the default setting for duplex and speed. So when you have two devices uh, that are auto negotiate full, then you are not going to have uh, any um, collisions because you are in full and full is collision free. Uh, but if you have both in half, then you could have collisions. And also if you have a mismatch, you're going to have problems, including collisions. Now broadcast domains. A broadcast domain extends across all layer one or layer two devices on a LAN. Only a layer three device, a router, will break the broadcast domain, also called a MAC broadcast domain. The broadcast domain consists of all devices on the LAN that receive the broadcast traffic. Remember, a router, a router, they don't have any pictures of routers in here, but a, a router separates uh, subnets, networks. Uh, each uh, port on a router goes to a different network. Uh, therefore, it breaks up the broadcast domain. When the layer two switch receives the broadcast, it will flood it out all interfaces except for the e ingress interface. Too many broadcasts may cause congestion. Increase, increasing devices at layer one or layer two will cause the broadcast domain to expand. So this is layer one. If you have, if you have a ton uh, um, of, uh, uh, and notice that when you have, when you have um, or, uh, switches connected to each other, the broadcast expands to that second switch so you have that just that many more potential issues now alleviating network congestion switches use the mac address table and full duplex to eliminate collisions and avoid congestion features of a switch that alleviate allevi alleviate congestion are as followed uh, fast port speeds depending on the model switches can have up to 100 gigabit port speeds uh, fast internet I'm sorry, fast internal switching. This uses fast internal bus or shared memory to improve performance. Large frame buffers. These allow for temporary storage while processing large quantities of frames and high port de density. This provides many ports for devices to be connected to LAN with, to the LAN with less cost. This also provides for more local traffic and less congestion. It seems like we have not covered enough material uh, to be considered a whole module, uh, but that is our presentation for this week. Um, so let me go ahead and start stop our sharing my screen. Uh, again, my name is Professor Don. I hope you join me for the next module uh, here in a few minutes. Uh, and um, if you have any questions about this module, please ask inside of our classroom or down below in the comments in YouTube, and I'll do my best to answer those questions. Um, enjoy this week. Got, I think, three or four assignments that you're going to be doing, so it's not going to be too bad. Uh, but I do, um, I do uh, remember to ask questions when you run into problems, and we're here to help. All right. Thank you so much for coming. I'll see you next week.